How important is Turkey to Christianity? Well, you might not know that the first place that Christians were called Christians was in Antioch. Now, Antioch in Syria, it, the Bible says, is actually Antioch in Turkey. Also, the greatest apostle in the New Testament was the Apostle Paul, who was born in Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus. Where's Tarsus? That's also Eastern Turkey. And then Paul's first missionary journey, he exclu almost exclusively traveled in Turkey, except for a brief stop in Cyprus. And so the gospel really had its first foothold outside of Israel in the nation of Turkey. Now back then, Saul probably wouldn't have thought of himself as a Turkish, but really that's who he was. He was a Turkish man, but he would have considered himself a Roman citizen because that was a, the biggest empire at that time. And also really the people who lived here for, for hundreds of years after would still continue to be called Greek because the Greek empire covered Turkey. Now today you can see that things have changed. Uh, the book of Revelation, Jesus predicted that the church would become lukewarm. Now, of course, we all over the world apply that to ourselves and we say, well, we personally have to stay on fire, and that's true. And then also we could apply that to uh, 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 our culture, our nation, that we need to maintain our Christian heritage. But really, that word was spoken to the seven churches of Revelation, and all seven churches were in Turkey. So how apt it is that Jesus predicted that this place would become lukewarm. So what's happened to this place? Well, today, this nation, which is, uh, was Christian for 1,500 years, actually is now 99% Muslim. This, which was the largest and really the first cathedral in Christendom, has now become a mosque. And you can see the four minarets that are surrounding it. And of course, they put the crescent moon right at the top. And inside, as we go in, you will see all the inscriptions have changed. They took away the crosses for uh, hundreds of years. They finally just uh, revealed those crosses again by taking off the plaster that was hiding all the Christian mosaic, all the Christian art. They took away all signs of Christianity and put Arabic inscriptions and put the word Allah and Muhammad and all the names of the caliphs there. And then they used this as a place uh, for worship. They made it into a mosque for a long time. Today though, it's not a church, it's not a mosque. In fact, nobody's allowed to pray here. One time they said that a, a lady, a Muslim lady came in and she wanted to pray and as soon as she did her Muslim prayer, the security came and took her away. The Pope himself is not allowed to come and, and, and uh, when he visits and pray inside of this place. Now he might do uh, uh, maybe a brief prayer quietly, but technically he's not allowed to pray, nobody's allowed to pray. It is a neutral place and it's a symbol of the secularism now of Turkey. So we're going to head inside and take a look at this beautiful architecture and I'm going to show you some more stuff very interesting inside. We're inside the Sophia. Come. We're going to take a look at the largest enclosed space that ancient people could build. What makes this so magnificent is that it's all built with stone. Now you know, it'd be impossible to build this again today because this took five years of total slave labor. And about 5,000 people died. Constantine first built a church here to the glory of Jesus Christ. He was a Christian convert and he was the, also the Roman Emperor. Now afterwards this place burned down, then they rebuilt it and it became an architectural feat because all of this space is under stone. Overhanging us is pure stone, heavy stone. No one had ever done that before. Now today you could go to the Vatican and St. Peter's Basilica and you can see a pretty large enclosed space, but this was the largest of its time. When the Muslims took over this church, they uh, destroyed the altar and then they put an altar that is slightly off-center so that it would be facing Mecca. And then they also built this 
very, very high pulpit, and this is where their imams would preach from, right up there. And this structure up here has actually got nothing to do with preaching. It's a place where the sultan used to pray, right up there. So this is how they Islamize uh, the church that's here.